things I don't think President Obama realizes. That after almost two years in his legacy of his presidency, almost 400, over 400 people have been discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. That is a black eye, Mr. President. That's a black eye. We will remember. So, going on with the story we're wanting to tell you today. The next person up here is going to share a story with you is Aubrey Service. He's the executive director for Service to Members Legal Defense Network. Aubrey is a Vietnam veteran. So as you can see up here today, we have veterans from all the way going back to Vietnam up here, all the way up to Iraq and Afghanistan, talking to you and telling you a story. Let's welcome Aubrey. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. SLDN sees the casualties of Don't Ask, Don't Tell almost every day. Since 1993, we have assisted over 10,000 LGBT service members with information and quality free legal services. We have seen their faces and we know firsthand the pain this law has inflicted. Half of the speakers today <coughs> have been SLDN clients. I was here in this park. Thank you. I was here in this park 11 months ago, along with hundreds of active duty service members, veterans, gay and straight, their families and their friends for another rally. We called it 265. That was the number of service members who had been discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell during the first five months President Obama was in office. We came here then to call upon the President to include repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell in his defense bill. He didn't. Since then, under the leadership of the self-proclaimed fierce advocate of our cause, the toll has risen. Sadly, I am back here today and once again calling on the President and Congress to do the right thing and stop firing gays and lesbians because of who they are. In his State of the Union message, President Obama said Repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell was the right thing to do. But last Friday, back there, President Obama did the wrong thing. Yeah. And, in doing, and in doing so, he and Secretary Gates delivered a devastating blow to getting repeal done this year. Most journalists and bloggers had turned off their computers and were safely into happy hour last Friday. <laughs> when the White House issued a statement that in the best Orwellian terms didn't say what it appeared to say, but said something quite the opposite. The President is committed to repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It's unequivocal, close quote. That's what it said the first sentence. Mm -hmm. We've heard that ringing endorsement before, many times before. What followed was nothing if not equivocal. Did I hear the same old, let's kick this down the road again? Yes. I did, yes I did. We've been hearing that since the Obama administration took office. We're behind you all the way. Let's kick it down the road a bit. That sounds like, some, like someone who wants to have it both ways. It doesn't sound like it came from the fierce advocate of repeal. I don't call that leadership. I call it politics as usual. The White House statement following shortly upon a letter from Secretary Gates and signed by him and Admiral Mullen to the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee that strongly opposed any legislation 
to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell before the Pentagon's working group finished its study. That's scheduled for December, just in time for the holiday rush. There is a stark and very and not very flattering contrast here between President Obama, who follows his military, and President Truman, whose military followed him. In 1948, virtually all the Pentagon brass was opposed to ending segregation in the ranks. The brass said the troops will never stand for it. After listening to their arguments, President Truman looked them in the eyes and did the right thing. Quote, it's about leadership, end quote, President Truman said. Truman was facing a tough election that year, and he still pushed forward a policy that did not even have 50% of the American public behind it. Why did he do it? Because it was right. Yes. Friday evening, President Obama did what he must think is the politically expedient thing. But he didn't show leadership. There was no profile in courage Friday night behind me. It was politics as usual. The White House wants to have it both ways, but that's not leadership. What happened Friday night must not stand. The release of that statement and the Pentagon letter were carefully timed to catch us napping. But we were not asleep. There is another way to get repeal done this year, but that will require the president to lead the way. Yes, we need to ensure that the recommendations of the Pentagon Working Group are received and considered by both committees. That is called compromise. It's called staying at the table. We would like to be at that table with you, Mr. President. Please do not walk away from our service members and close down repeal this year. Some of us have been silent for too long. Today, we insist that there be full citizenship for all service members, all service members this year. We are going to fight. We will keep coming back, Mr. President. We are not going to play the politics as usual game. We are going to stay at the table with our vote, with our money, and with our feet. Mr. President, show us the path to getting repeal done this year. Lead, and we will follow. Thank you. All right. All right. The next veteran I'd li like to introduce you to is Brett Edward Stout. Brett was a uh, Russian linguist in the United States Marine Corps. He was uh, also a uh, weapons marksmanship instructor, and he was accepted into Marine Recon. Now, I don't know how many of you know about Marine, Con Marine Recon or Navy SEALs, but it is the top of the, the chain. It's one of the best, best units in the uh, military. When he was going through Marine Recon, 